Well, welcome back. Now we're going to be looking at 6.2. What? We're going to talk about the distributive property. And again, I know you've done this in the past before too. So this should be sort of review. Another tool for solving these equations is the distributive property. We might also have to combine like terms. Remember, we're going to clean up the trash. So let's do some review. How do we use the distributive property? Well, it's kind of like passing out cupcakes at your birthday party. You just kind of take the first number and you're going to distribute it to every term inside the parentheses. And by distribute, we're going to multiply. So negative 2 times 4x. We know that that is equal to negative 8x. And you got to be careful with these negatives. Negative 2 times negative 7. That's a positive 14. So I'm going to write down plus 14. Does that jar your memory a little bit? Let's try example 2 negative 7 times 2x plus 3. So we're going to use the distributive property. We're going to get negative 14x, right? Because negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. And then negative 7 times 3 is a minus 21. So those are our first two examples. That's to refresh our memory doing the distributive property, which is one of my favorite properties. Now let's solve some equations. Example 3, we start right off. Notice we have 5 times the quantity. That's how we say that. 5 times the quantity, 2x minus 3. Let's use that distributive property. So 5 times 2x is 10x. And 5 times a negative 3. That's how you got to put it in your head. That's like a negative 3. So 5 times a negative 3. That's like a negative 15. So I'm going to write minus 15. I'm not going to forget about my line right there. And it all equals negative 35. Now it's a two-step equation, right? You know how to solve this. We have to add 15 to each side. That's easy peasy. What's that going to give us? These cancel. We get 10x equals, this will give us a negative 20, and then we have to divide by 10. It's the opposite of multiply. Divide by 10. God, you know what's nice about all these equations? It's the same rules. I mean, really, they don't change too much. So if you learn your rules, you're good to go on lots of different types of equations. Let's look at example four. That's a good one to do because we have that minus right there and then the x. So something tricky is going to happen. Let's check it out. Two times three is positive six. But then we have a two times a negative eight. That's going to give us a negative 16. Can't forget the x. And that's going to equal 22. Not going to forget my line again. So what I like to do in these type of problems is I can rewrite the order. It's okay to rewrite the order. You just got to keep the sign that's in front. So I'm going to rewrite it like this, negative 16x, and that is a positive 6, right? So I'm going to write plus 6. All I did was switch the order. There's a little trick I taught you, number 1. All right, now what? Two-step equation, just like over here. we got to get rid of that 6. So we're going to subtract 6 from each side. They cancel. We get negative 16x equals, what's this going to give us? A positive 16. We divide by negative 16 and we are going to get negative one. Wow, this problem goes all the way downstairs. Negative one, I said. Boom, easy enough. That's how we solve equations with the distributive property. But guess what? Now it's gonna be like your birthday party. We're gonna combine like terms after we distribute, what? So this is like, you're gonna pass out the cupcakes and then you're gonna clean up the trash. I should, hey, that sounds pretty good. Pass out the cupcakes. Clean up the trash. All right, example five. I look at this whole mess of stuff. Really, if we follow our GEMDAS, remember GEMDAS? We got grouping symbols. All right, is there anything we can do in here? No, not really. Exponents, no exponents. Then multiply, divide, then add, subtract. Let's multiply. We got to get that multiplication done, which is the distributive property. So we're going to distribute first through that set of parentheses. This is going to give us an 8x minus 20 and that just comes from the first part now the 3x the equal sign and the 2 they're just hanging out so we'll add those to the mix like this well guess what we do now we're going to combine like terms we're going to clean up the trash look 8x and a 3x they can go together let's put those two guys together that'll give us an 11x we get minus 20 and then that'll equal 2 see what we did there we put those like terms together and we added them to get 11x. All right, next, we are going to add 20 to each side. This is a two-step equation. Don't forget to write that line. Keep everything separate. 
they're gonna cancel. We're gonna get 11x is going to equal 22. When we divide by 11, uh, I hope this fits. I'm running out of room here. X will equal two. Boomers, how about that one? Let's try example six. Now six is a little crazy. Please don't do this. Please, please hear me out. People, hear me out. Don't go. Six minus 10 is negative four. You cannot do that. That is, do not write that down. Do not write that down. Oh, I'm losing my voice. That's how bad that was. The reason you cannot do that, you're all the way down. If you do that, you're doing subtraction. That's at the end of GEMDAS. We have to multiply this through first. Let's do multiplication. We have to do the distributive property. So that six is gonna chill, chill out. Now we have like a negative 10 times D. That is negative 10 D. And then we have a negative 10 times a negative four. I know they're minuses. It might be playing with your head, but you think of it like a negative 10 times a negative four. That is a positive 40. We're gonna keep that line like we always do. This is all gonna equal 16. So now it's time to clean up that trash. Let's put that negative 10 D right here. Six plus 40, look at that, six, 40, they're the same. So that's just positive 46. Remember that minus goes with that 10. This is all gonna be equal to 16. Let's subtract 46 from each side. Now we're at a two-step equation. I'm assuming you are good with those. They cancel, we get negative 10 times D is going to equal a negative 30. What happens when we divide by negative 10? We get positive three. Yeah, we do. Positive three will be the answer to that one there. All right, that was example six. Why don't you pause the video and try example seven all by yourself? Very similar, lots of negatives. You love those negatives. Okay, so this is what I got. I used a little bit of color to help you kind of see what I did here, but distribute. Do not forget that. That's a positive three because it's negative three times negative one. And then you, Clean up that trash, clean it up. We're gonna put that 10 and three together. This gives us a 13. The negative six is just staying. Don't forget the negative. And then it becomes a two-step equation. Subtract 13, divide by negative six, we're all done there. I wanted to do number eight with you because there's fractions. And it's our first one that has to do with fractions. But you know what? It's not difficult because we're gonna treat fractions just like regular numbers. What is half of 12? That is six. So half of 12x is 6x. And then we're gonna do half of negative 14. That's going to be, well, half of 14 is seven. All right, so in this problem, again, we're gonna distribute first. We're gonna leave everything else the same. Doesn't change. Let's draw that line down the middle, like we always do. And now it's time to clean up that trash. So we have a negative seven plus one. That's gonna give us a negative six. So we get six x minus six is gonna equal negative 24. We're gonna add six to each side. All right, what do we get here? A negative 18 equals six X. When we divide by six, both sides, we're gonna get algebras equal negative three. Whoa, done with that. Get rid of that, we don't need that. So X equals negative three. That is example A. And of course, we wouldn't be done unless I was able to give you one of these fancy word problems. Because I know you love word problems. But guess what? I gave you the same word problem as before. What? How come we can't just do it like we did before? Well, we can solve it that way. But this way asks us to use the distributive property. So when I create my equation, that's what I have to do. All right, so let's look at it. Last time we went like this. This plus this plus this plus this, and it all equals 26. To use the distributive property, I'm just gonna say, you know what? I've got two of these x's, right? Because that was there. So I've got two of the x's, and I have two of these x plus threes. All right, so we're gonna call it two of the x plus threes. And when I add all that together, it should equal 26. And guess what? We have an amazing equation here. We're gonna distribute that two first, right? He's gonna chill out there for a little bit. So we're gonna get two X plus six. That will equal 26. Can't forget my guy that was chilling. And now we can clean up that trash, getting those two X's together. We get four X plus six equals 26. 
And I think you remember how to solve this from here. We subtract six from each side, keep that line going, give us a four X equal to 20, divide by four and X equals five. That's it. So in this case, it says solve for X, but remember they might ask you to solve for each side, which that would be this, and then plug a five in there, I get eight again. That's the same answers we got before, but guess what we used? The distributive property. And that's all we have for this lesson. Ladies and gents, remember, this is Mr. Kelly in K-Town. It's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. See you.